Good morning. Welcome you all to this class on HSC first paper English. Dear students, uh, in the previous class, uh, I explained lesson 3 of unit 7. And in today's class, I will explain lesson 4 of unit 7. You know, uh, the title of unit 7 is uh, Traffic Education. And the title of lesson 4 of unit 7 is from Philactos, uh, Philippos Philactos film, My Brother, the Traffic Policeman. Now, uh, just look at the title of unit uh, 7, Traffic Education. So, I want to share certain things with you. Uh, basically, when we uh, see the word, when we observe the word uh, traffic or the word comes to our mind, naturally what we understand that there is traffic jam or something like that on the street. But traffic education uh, is used in a broader sense. You understand that traffic education doesn't simply mean traffic jam uh, in the, on the street. And after completing this lesson, I will also give you some ideas about paragraph writing and about traffic education as well. Because remember one thing that uh, in paragraph writing, basically for first paper, there is paragraph in first paper, there is paragraph in second paper as well. So uh, in first paper, you, uh, you know that uh, when you are supposed to write paragraph uh, in first paper, the paragraphs are basically related to the units and lessons of the text. And when the unit, I mean the paragraphs are related to the units and uh, lessons of the text, naturally the units become very important for us to understand. Because there are some aspects, there are some uh, ideas of the lesson or of the unit which should be used while writing the paragraph. Now, uh, traffic education and lesson 4 from Philippos Philactos film. My brother, the traffic policeman. Now, uh, let's start uh, reading the lesson. So, after completing the lesson, I will also make you understand about flowchart writing and I will also give you some ideas about uh, question answers and finally, I will give you ideas about paragraph writing. Remember that these issues or these things uh, will be repeatedly uh, discussed in the classroom because all these things are uh, very important, you know, question answers are important. Uh, you know, a paragraph writing is important and at the same time, uh, you know, that uh, flowchart writing is also important. So, let's start, uh, you know, uh, the uh, text or the lesson. The persona, this is not exactly the uh, text, this is the introduction of the text. The persona of a traffic policeman has always been a curious one. So, before going to the text, original text or original lesson, uh, you will notice that in some cases there is a kind of introduction uh, before that. It introduces the readers, uh, it's a style, you know, it's a style to introduce the readers about the text he is going to understand, going to read. So, before going to the uh, lesson, uh, there is a kind of introduction which we are reading now. The persona of a traffic policeman has always been a curious one. So, the persona uh, basically refers, I mean the word persona refers uh, to the characteristic features of, uh, of a traffic policeman. And um, it has uh, always been a curious one. That means we are always very uh, curious, you know, always very uh, curious about the characteristics, about the personality, about the features, about the style of a traffic policeman. And uh, it is uh, very, uh, you know, attractive for us, attractive in the sense that we have got a kind of curiosity about the person. It has often found important space and close treatment in literature and other arts. You know, there are different professionals uh, in our society. There are, I, in the previous class, I gave some examples. There are doctors, there are teachers, there are engineers, uh, there are uh, policemen, administrators. And all these professions are very important for the society. And when you will uh, read poetry, when you will read short story, when you will read uh, novels, and you will uh, you watch drama, you must have observed certain things that different uh, pieces of literature focus on different uh, professions. So, we have also noticed the profession or uh, traffic policeman in poetry, in different branches of literature, I mean, in drama, in poetry, in novel, in short story. And over here, what uh, is uh, being said in the introduction that we are going to see a traffic policeman even in film. 
besides many poems about this fascinating character, you know, the uh, meaning of the word or the synonym of the word fascinating is basically attractive and enchanting. And uh, what about the ideas, what are the characteristics regarding this fascinating person? There is at least one movie where the central character is a traffic policeman. So we are going to have some ideas about a movie where the central character is a traffic policeman. So it's uh, the, the kind of movie we are going to learn about now is a, is a different type of movie. Basically, in the movies, what we see, the main character is someone very special, someone extraordinary, a very good student, uh, you know, very good athlete, or at least a very good dancer, singer, or something, or very handsome person. So these are basically the tradition of uh, main characters in movies or even in dramas. But what we are going to read in this lesson, we will see that the main character is a traffic policeman. So naturally the question that comes to our mind that why a movie was uh, made focusing on a traffic policeman. The reason is that in recent time or in modern times, any person can be the main character of a movie. This was not the tradition in the past, not even during Shakespeare's time. The tradition was to focus on uh, extraordinary personality in the movies or in poetry, in drama, everywhere. In 1963, Greek filmmaker Philippos Philactos made this film named My Brother, the Traffic Policeman. So the movie we are going to uh, you know, explain or we are going to develop or have some ideas about the movie. The title of the movie is my brother, the traffic policeman, and uh, the filmmaker's name is Philippos Philactos. And uh, it, it was a Greek film, remember this. The film was made in uh, Greek language, and the name of the maker is Philippos Philactos, and the title of the movie is My Brother, the Traffic Policeman. That's exactly what we are going to read in today's class. It featured, now we are straight uh, going to the, you know, uh, plot of the movie. So what is the plot of the movie? Here we, what we see is basically the plot. It's a very uh, short passage, very simple passage. But what is important, I, I have already uh, give, given you some ideas. The important issues are, the focus is on a very ordinary, uh, not ordinary in the sense that is insignificant, ordinary in the sense that uh, our tradition is to focus on extraordinary um, you know, personalities, uh, as I have already mentioned. It featured a slightly manic traffic policeman. So it featured, the word features over here, it uh, indicates that it presents. Uh, it presents a slightly manic traffic policeman. So the movie that, uh, that I have already mentioned, the title of the movie, traffic policeman, uh, my, uh, you know, the title of the movie, I'm going back to the uh, previous slide, uh, look at the title of the movie, My Brother, the Traffic Policeman. Remember this. The title of the movie is My Brother, the Traffic Policeman. And now we are just uh, having some ideas about the plot of the movie. So it featured a slightly manic traffic policeman. So the main character of this movie is a traffic policeman. And he is not um, a traffic policeman in the traditional sense of the term. He is slightly manic. Manic means, uh, to some extent, eccentric. Uh, that means there are some peculiarities in his character. So that is the meaning of the word manic. So it featured a slightly manic traffic policeman means the movie presents a traffic policeman who is, to some extent, eccentric. That means there are some, uh, you know, peculiar characteristics in him. His name is Antonis uh, Picroclus. So the name of the traffic policeman is Antonis uh, Picroclus. So uh, he is uh, basically the main character. He's a traffic policeman. And uh, you know that uh, if you have got some ideas about uh, the names of the uh, Greek people, you know, Aristotle, Socrates. Uh, so if you look uh, at the names of uh, Greek people, you must have noticed that uh, their, their names are like this, Picroclus, something like this who is utterly devoted to service and duty. So look at the characteristics, look at the, uh, you know, features of Picroclus's character. What type of person uh, he is? Is he lazy? Uh, does he ignore uh, his responsibilities? What kind of person is he? 
the passage says that Anthony Spectroclus, he is completely or utterly, utterly means completely or fully, he is fully devoted to service and duty. That means the responsibilities that have been given to him, he is completely devoted to his responsibilities, he is completely devoted to his service and duty and applies the traffic code with unyielding severity. This indicates again his character. So, what kind of person is he? He applies, that means uh, the responsibilities he has been given, he applies those responsibilities, he performs his job very strictly and he maintains, he follows the traffic rules uh, very strictly, unyielding, that means he does not surrender. He does not surrender, severity, you know, that uh, extreme uh, situation. That means whatever is necessary for him to maintain the smooth vehicular movement on the street or to maintain law and order situation on the street regarding traffic movement, he maintains that, he tries to maintain that and he is ready to apply any traffic law, any traffic code, any traffic rule in order to maintain the smooth movement of vehicles on the streets. So that is exactly what the sentence means. So we have got two very significant characteristics of uh, Picroclus. The first one is he is very devoted to his service and duty and the second one is that he is ready to apply and implement any kind of rule whether it is strict or not that does not matter and with unending severity he does not surrender to any person. So even if the person is very important, very powerful, he does not hesitate to implement the rule. So he is very strict to the rules of traffic. Tickets rain down upon lawbreakers. So tickets rain down here, tickets mean uh, basically giving fine, charging fine. So who violate law or who violate traffic rules on the street, he gives them ticket. So giving ticket does not mean that he is giving something, you know, positive or he is giving uh, a kind of gift, not like that. Giving tickets mean that he is fining, he is charging fine to the vehicles who or which violate rules, I mean traffic rules on the street. So tickets rain down, so tickets drop like rain, that means he gives or he charges fine frequently. So uh, fines come from him very frequently, so he does not hesitate to fine. And not only that, he does not uh, have any willingness, he does not have any intention to know that who is the law violator, who is violating the law. That man can be important, that man can be powerful, but he does not hesitate to uh, charge fine. So tickets rain down upon lawbreakers, in particular taxi drivers. And when he charges fine, uh, this has been observed that basically the ta taxi drivers become the victim because they violate the traffic rules most according to this passage, um, uh, telling everything according to this passage. And especially Lampros who happens to be in love with Picroclus's sister Fofo. So he gives fine to the taxi drivers most and especially one person becomes frequent victim to his fine. And the name of the person is uh, Lampros and Lampros is a taxi driver, I have already said and Lampros becomes victims to tickets that means fine and Lampros is that man who is in love with Picroclus' sister Fofo. So Picroclus has got sister and his sister's name is Fofo. So uh, you know that Lampros is the lover of uh, Fofo, that means uh, Fofo is the sister, uh, beloved of uh, Lampros and Fofo is Picroclus' sister. So uh, just uh, look at the importance of the situation that Picroclus does not even hesitate to charge fine to the, uh, you know, lover of his uh, sister. So what kind of person he is? He does not even spare his relatives, he does not even spare the closest people, 
he, uh, he doesn't uh, have any uh, or he doesn't have any intention to uh, be reluctant, to stay reluctant to the family members regarding law and order situation. So even when Lampros is the lover of Fofo, that means Picroclus' sister, Picroclus doesn't hesitate to impose fine on Lampros. So this is the eccentricity uh, in his character. Some people think, but if the person strictly maintains law and order, this is expected from us as well that the person should not have any sympathy for towards the family members, towards friends or towards others. So this sincerity, this uh, responsible attitude of a person sometimes appears to be eccentric to us because of his sincerity. In his turn, now the traffic police, I mean, uh, you know, Picroclus, he may be, he may appear to be uh, eccentric, he may appear to be manic, he may appear to be a person uh, who is unromantic. Apparently, he is basically not like that because in his turn, the traffic policeman is in love with a businessman's daughter, Kiki, who is afraid to reveal, uh, yeah, I am going to the next part of the uh, uh, sentence later. Now, Picroclus himself is in love and he is in love with a girl whose name is Kiki and Kiki is a businessman's daughter. So Picroclus uh, may appear to be unromantic outwardly, externally, but inwardly he has got a very soft heart and that is why he is also in love with Kiki, a girl. But Kiki is very afraid. Why she is very afraid? She is very afraid to reveal her feelings to her father. Kiki cannot tell her father that she has got an affair with Picroclus. Why? What is the reason? Is Kiki afraid of uh, revealing the truth of her affair to her father or there is something else? Besides, Antonius has given lots of traffic tickets to a bus belonging to her father's company. That is the problem. Kiki's father has got a bus company and Antony Picroclus, I mean this traffic policeman, he frequently gives fine to the buses of Kiki's father's company. So if Kiki tells her father that Picroclus is her lover, then the father might be very angry thinking that this man is frequently charging fine to my bus company and my daughter is in love with that uh, particular person. So this is the reason why Kiki is very afraid to reveal the secrets of her affair with Picroclus. For all these reasons, the road to marriage for both couples is long and strewn with obstacles. So these are the reasons why the road to marriage, here road to marriage means the you know, uh, condition, the realities that lead to marriage because Picroclus' sister, Fo, uh, you know, Fofo, her marriage is uh, also not smooth because, uh, you know, you have already uh, noticed that uh, Fofo's uh, lover, you know, Lampros, uh, he has frequently been fined by Picroclus. So naturally, this attitude of Picroclus uh, has impeded the smooth road to marriage of uh, Fofo, obviously. And his own marriage has also been, uh, you know, impeded and strewn with ob obstacles. That means uh, full or replete with obstacles or impediments or um, hurdles because, uh, you know, he uh, has given fine to both uh, Lampros or he has charged fine Lampros and he has also you know, charged fine to the bus company of, you know, uh, Kiki's father. But the outcome is a happy one for everyone involved. But the ending of the film is very romantic and we see that both these affairs, they find, you know, a kind of positive uh, fulfillment. Uh, that means they, it uh, ends in marriage. So the ending is happy of the movie. And uh, both the couples, both Picroclus and uh, Kiki, and on the other hand, Fofo and Lampros, they marry at the end of the uh, movie. But their road to marriage was full of obstacles because of 
the eccentric uh, behavior or attitude of uh, you know uh, traffic policeman whose name is Anthony Spicroclus. Now the question is which I also ask myself sometimes that is this man eccentric or is this man manic? Apparently his behavior may seem to be manic, may seem to be eccentric but don't you think that he is a devoted traffic policeman who doesn't spare anybody? Why should he spare his sister? Why should he uh, spare his uh, would-be uh, father-in-law? Because he has to apply the traffic rules on the street regardless of the identity of the violators, staying uh, you know, regardless to the identity of the violators. So his uh, devotion to the uh, service may appear to be eccentric to us but basically he is a very positive person and he is very responsible person. So that is all about the you know passage. And now if we uh, go to the flow chart, now uh, you have by this time you must have developed some ideas about flow chart writing. But still I want to share certain things with you. I will uh, explain these things uh, regarding uh, flow chart and then I will come to this uh, slide again. Now remember one thing that all the passages are not suitable for flowchart practice or uh, writing practice but uh, still we will try because we do not know which passage will be selected in the examination uh, for flowchart writing. But before going to flowchart writing I want to share certain things with you. The issues I discussed even in my previous classes but these issues are subject to repeated discussion that is why I am uh, willing to uh, share these things with you again. So let us go to the board and again I will come back to this uh, slide after giving some brief idea about flowchart writing. Now so uh, what is flowchart? Flowchart is uh, basically a kind of you know writing task. Uh, in which you are supposed to write some phrases, not some phrases, five phrases. We will give you a passage, definitely there will be a passage and in the, uh, uh, after the passage the question is something like this, that write a flowchart on this or that and when you will write the flowchart we give an example as well and you are supposed to maintain the example of the flowchart. And you have to maintain the example of the flowchart and how you will maintain the example of the flowchart. Say for example, uh, in this slide, uh, you are not watching the slide but I am ju just uh, using one example from here. Uh, slightly manic, just look at this example, uh, slightly manic. Uh, traffic policeman I will go to the slide again I am telling you but just I get this example that this sort of example we will give and ask you to write uh, the answer now what are the you know uh, what are the rules of writing flowchart so how you will uh, write flowchart so uh, when you will write flowchart, remember certain things that your flowchart has to be answered in, you know, phrases. First thing, one example will be given. One example, we will give you one example and you have to write five more phrases following the example we give. Now the question comes that how you will write the phrases or what kind of phrases you will write. Say for example, this one is a noun phrase, a slightly manic traffic policeman, it is a noun phrase. So when I will ask you to write the answers, is it mandatory that you have to follow the noun phrase? Remember, it will depend upon the type of question that we will ask, the, it will depend on the question that we ask. So according to the question, if I use, even if I use noun phrase, it may seem to you that you cannot answer in noun phrase. So you can go to verb phrase, you can go to infinitive phrase, you can go to present participle phrase, you can go to past participle phrase, 
you can go to other types of phrases but remember one thing you have to answer in phrases so that is the first thing so remember you have to write five phrases in the flowchart and you have to answer in phrases and there are other items there are other issues that are also important that when we give the example we basically focus on a particular aspect of the paragraph so the question is also very important which i will explain when i will show you the slide there are certain other things that if you go to different types of you know uh, phrases so the, the students frequently ask questions they ask so whether we will maintain different types of phrases in our flowchart writing or we are bound to maintain the example that you give in the question paper. Is it mandatory that uh, we have to use the only uh, type of phrase uh, that you use as an example in the flowchart? Our answer is that it is better to follow the structure of the phrase. Over here I have used noun phrase. It is better to follow the structure of noun phrase throughout the answer. But the problem I have already mentioned is that it the, it is not always possible to maintain the same structure in flowchart writing because you have to you know uh, you make a kind of link between the phrases and the question. So the question is more important than the types of structure of the phrases that you will see on the slide. You will notice that I have frequently violated I have uh, I have used different types of phrases because I didn't get uh, plenty of examples of noun phrase in the uh, in this uh, particular passage there are other things if the example is uh, said the example is given from the middle of the paragraph for example from the middle of the paragraph so what will you do if the example is given from the middle of the paragraph it is your responsibility to write phrases from the area of the paragraph that comes after that means the sentences that come afterwards so if the example is given from the middle of the paragraph or the passage then you are supposed to use examples from the rest part of the passage don't go upwards go downwards again there are some questions the students ask that if the points below the part where the example from where the example is taken so if we don't get sufficient or plenty you know phrases sufficient number of phrases then can we go back our uh, suggestion is it's not suggested we don't suggest to go back but still if the number of phrases uh, which you need to answer is fewer then you you, uh, you are bound to go back. I will not say that you go back to the past, go back to the, you know, upward or go back to the previous part of the uh, passage. So, what I will say that if it is possible to answer from the next part after the example, it is better. It is not suggested to go backward, but if you are bound to do that, then there is no option, but still we do not suggest that. So, remember what I said. Number one, that you have to, uh, we will give you one example and you have to write five more examples. We will give the example in phrase, you have to write obviously in phrases. Uh, try to maintain the phrase, I mean structure of the phrase that we give as an example. But if it is not possible to maintain the same structure of the phrase, then go to other kinds of phrases, other types of phrases that I will also go when I will show you the slide. So it is, uh, you know, approved. And it's better to use examples uh, after uh, where the example is uh, given. So these are the things you have to remember when you write flowchart. There is one more thing that in flowchart you have to use a box like this. Now there is a, a tendency among the students that they, some of them they use box in this manner. So how many boxes you have to prepare? You have to prepare six boxes. Why six boxes? Because in the first box, you have to use the example that we will give in the question paper. So there will be six boxes, one example given by us and five uh, answers or five phrases prepared by you. So there will be six boxes and you can 
maintain this sort of, uh, you have to maintain this sort of, you know, vertical style, not horizontal style. Why uh, vertical style? Because in, if you follow this uh, style, then it is better or you will, you know, you will get more space to write the, some phrases will be bigger. So, if you maintain something like this, you know, uh, it becomes very difficult. It becomes extremely difficult sometimes to write the phrases because uh, you have to answer in this manner. It is not always possible. But if you maintain this order, then you have the, you know, entire page at your command. So, you can easily write that. So, after writing the phrase, make the box and do something like this. Say, for example, this is number one. So, this is number two. You can insert the number within the box or you can insert the number above the box. There is no problem. So, this is number three. So, like this, you have to go up to six. The first one is uh, given by us. So, dear students, let us go back to our slide so that I can use the example of today's, uh, you know, we are going back to the uh, slide. We can use uh, how I prepared this flowchart. Now, look at this one. Uh, the question is, make a flowchart showing the characteristic features of Antony's Picroclus. One is uh, done for you. Now, look at uh, the example that I have used, the slightly manic traffic policeman. I am telling you again that this, you know, uh, passage is not that much suitable for a flowchart writing practice, but still I have used it. Why? Sometimes even in the board questions you will see, uh, you will face some difficulties like this, that there are scanty number of phrases, uh, appropriate phrases which are, you know, um, relevant to the answer, but still you are supposed to do that. That is why I have done it. What is the question? The question is very important. The question is characteristic features of Antony's Picroclus. That means uh, about the characteristics of uh, Picroclus, that is the main concern of this question. So, the question is very important. So, the first phrase that I have used, a slightly manic traffic policeman. So, what kind of phrase I have used? I have used noun phrase. So, you will definitely ask me questions, sir, what is noun phrase? What is verb phrase? What is present participle phrase? Definitely, it requires another class to explain all these things. But let me tell you one thing, frankly, a phrase uh, I, I discussed in uh, one of my previous classes. I also discussed the difference between phrase and clause. So, you have to remember these things. It is not possible to explain all these things in every class. So, the only uh, thing that I will remind you that a phrase is a group of words where you will not have any finite verb and a clause is different from a phrase. In a clause, you will get one finite verb at least. And there are there is a structure of noun phrase, there is structure of present participle phrase, past participle phrase and every phrase obviously. So, uh, the phrase that I have used uh, is noun phrase because it starts with a determiner, you know, and uh, then we will have uh, other things, you have other things. In the second, when I started writing the answer, utterly devoted to service and uh, duty, you know, I have changed the structure uh, of the uh, phrase, I have um, used a past participle phrase and then again I have changed applies or applying, either uh, I have used verb phrase or I am using present participle phrase, the traffic code with unyielding severity. Uh, who is the subject over here? Antonis Picroclus is the subject. And that is why if I use verb, then I have to use, uh, I have to remember that Picroclus is third person singular number. So, that is why I have used applies, remember this. If the subject is third person singular number and if you use verb phrase like this, you have to uh, write in this manner, you have to say applies or applying the traffic code with unyielding uh, severity. You can use either applies, you can also use applying, but the structure of the phrase, you know, over here is different. And I am using, you know, different types of structure. Why? Because I have to answer the, I have to, I have to make the relevance between the answer and the question. So, I have always in my mind, what is the question? The question is about the characteristics of Picroclus. So, when I am writing the characteristics of Picroclus, I am not getting everything ready as noun phrase. So, I am using different types of phrase. Tickets raining down upon lawbreakers in particular taxi drivers. This is how you can write this, uh, you know, phrase. Or you can also 
make a kind of change in this phrase. Sometimes you are supposed to do, or uh, you, you are supposed to make some changes in, uh, you know, writing phrase. Picroclus raining down tickets upon lawbreakers, in particular taxi drivers. This is, this. Uh, look at this uh, example uh, very attentively. Picroclus, if I use a single auxiliary verb like is, Picroclus is raining down tickets, then it will be transformed into a complete sentence. So I have just omitted the auxiliary verb. And when I have omitted the auxiliary verb, then it has become a phrase. You can also ask me a question, if I omit Picroclus, if I simply say raining down tickets upon lawbreakers in a particular taxi drivers, it's okay, it's okay, no problem. Because why is it okay? Because we are, we are talking about picroclus. The subject is picroclus. As long as the phrase is directly linked to the subject, then you can write it. Otherwise, if the subject changes, then you have to use the subject as well. So, this phrase can be written in three ways. Number one, tickets raining down upon lawbreakers, in particular taxi drivers. Okay. Picroclus raining down, this is better. The second option is better. Picroclus raining down tickets upon lawbreakers in particular taxi drivers or you can simply write raining down tickets upon lawbreakers in particular taxi drivers. Now look at the next example. I have used, uh, you know, prepositional uh, phrase or uh, you can, you know, the, the, there is a um, prepositional phrase or adverbial phrase very close. You can also say it's almost same. In love with a businessman's daughter, Kiki, I didn't get any other option except using this as prepositional phrase. That's why I have used it. Giving lots of traffic tickets to a bus belonging to Kiki's father's company. So all these characteristics are related to uh, Picroclus. And these are the points, these are the phrases that I have used in this, uh, you know, flowchart writing. So. Uh, there may be some variation in your writing, there may be some changes, there may be some uh, differences in preparing phrases between you and me, but it does not mean that uh, mine one is only right, your one can also be right, but remember the issues that I discussed on the uh, board. Now, uh, dear students, let us uh, go to the next slide and just answer the following questions. So, these are the types of questions. I have uh, taken these questions from the text. I did not formulate these questions. Now, what is the first question? What does giving tickets mean in the context? Now, you can write the answer in your own language, but the main point of the answer has to be right. What is the main point? The main point is giving tickets. What does it mean? I have already explained. Giving tickets mean charging fine. So, giving fine. So, what idea of the central character have you formed? So, you, you just practice these things uh, at home that uh, what kind of answers you can prepare on based on these questions. So, what idea of the central character have you formed? So, uh, at the beginning of the passage, it has been said that the central character is slightly manic. But uh, what kind of idea of the you have formed? The question has given me some kind of liberty. So I can say that though the person, I mean Picroclus appears to be eccentric at the beginning, I think he is a devoted uh, traffic uh, policeman. So that is my idea. You can think that, sir, why did not you write the answer over here? You know, prepared answers are available in the market. You also know where things are available. But if I simply write the answers over here and if I just give you uh, prepared notes, then it will be detrimental to you. It will not bring any benefits. I am just giving you the clue that how these answers can be formulated. In one of my class, I will also give you some model answers definitely in one of my next classes. But now, I just want to tell you one thing that these questions should be answered uh, at best in two sentences, not more than in two sentences, unless it is highly necessary. So, just uh, try to understand that focus on the main point of the question. The first question, giving tickets means charging or imposing fine. The second one, what kind of 
uh, idea of the central character have you formed which has given me liberty that's why I'm saying that though he appears to be eccentric but I personally think he's a very devoted policeman and he is very sincere and responsible to his service what is meant by the road to marriage meant uh, the road to marriage basically it uh, means uh, the situation the conditions uh, towards uh, you know uh, marriage ceremony uh, the road to marriage of uh, both the couples uh, you know was not smooth why it was not smooth because of the behavior or characteristics of you know this is uh, you you are not supposed to uh, write this sentence in the answer but just i am trying to make you understand that road to marriage basically indicates the situation that leads to the marriage ceremony in which language was the movie probably made probably because uh, in the passage it is not said but in the introduction it was mentioned it was uh, made in uh, greek language probably how does the movie end the movie ends happily with uh, everyone towards everyone uh, as every romantic movie or uh, novel ends so these are the ways you can write the answers of the questions just try to answer these questions at home uh, and remember one thing only one problem you will face the problem is that there may be some grammatical mistakes obviously and uh, in the next classes i will try i will i will just uh, make you write the answers of these questions uh, during this live class and i will see some of the models in the uh, comment box and i will instantly give you feedback in my next classes so that's how i have thought that that's how uh, we can practice we can make this class more you know uh, lively so uh, finally i wanted to give you some ideas about the uh, you know paragraph writing in not in this class in this class i will just give you a paragraph writing itself needs a different class i took one of my class on paragraph writing but in today's class uh, why i have uh, kept this item over here only to inform you that there is a difference between first paper and second paper paragraph writing in first paper paragraph writing you have to prepare the paragraph answering questions there will be some questions usually five and you have to answer the questions and after answering the questions or by answering the questions you have to formulate the paragraph and the length of the paragraph in first paper is 200 words and in second paper it is 150 words so uh, these are the informations that i wanted to convey to you i didn't want to discuss paragraph writing in this class just i wanted to tell you that in first paper paragraph writing already you have uh, come to know these things but just these are important issues that you have to prepare the paragraph in 200 words and you have to formulate the paragraph by answering questions the question number of questions is usually five single para you all know that a paragraph has to be written in a single para and what is more important that in first paper the paragraph is i mean the title of the paragraph is linked to the unit and title of the unit and lesson so this is important what i wanted to convey to you so dear students in today's class i want to conclude over here in the next class we will start new uh, you know unit and new lesson so stay home stay fine thank you very much from today's class thank you